but uh, also the government wanted to monetize that. So uh, we essentially lent them money against those future foreclosed properties. And you know, we did, I did that deal in 07, 08. Um, and I know the deal got paid fine because they foreclosed a lot of properties and then someone else came in and when, when you buy a property really cheap, the first thing you have to pay is, you know, late taxes. So, so, um, so yeah, that, that was a case where, I mean, obviously in this particular case, we knew the government asked, you know, we asked for all that information. We knew what, what properties were already in the process of being foreclosed and all of that, who are awarding taxes. Um, so, but I do think that, for example, you know, outside of my own interest at the time for that financing, that was really designed to help the government, uh, that, uh, you know, that information was not readily available to other uh, interested parties doing work with that government. Okay. You know, I, I kind of feel that it should be because it was pretty significant. Sure. <laughs> All right. Um, so my next set of questions it, uh, is related to risks related to significant estimates. Um, so first, I want to just check to make sure you don't have any questions about the materials that we sent to you related to significant estimates. Mm -hmm. And this one is on um, this first category is on risk. And so this is a, a little bit different um, than the other two risk ones. Chris, um, so this information is about um, inputs to an estimate that has already been recorded in the financial statements or um, disclosed in the notes. Okay. So um, as specifically as possible, based on the specific circumstances for the significant estimates for risks, um, how would you modify your analysis for making decisions or assessing accountability um, to incorporate risks associated with certain inputs for estimated amounts that are recognized in the financial statements or disclosed in the notes, if at all? And then, how, again, how meaningful um, would that information be to your analysis? Yeah, I, I think that for the most part, uh, for the most part, this can, this can be uh, a relatively simple assessment um, you know I think that the, the first example that you give of the uh, you know cost of municipal landfill closure <laughs> and post closure that seems to be a pretty common thing uh, yeah. where, where they do they will say yeah this is gonna cost us hundred million dollars um, the uh, you know if, if that if that if that figure the hundred million dollar figure is correct and, and I think that the market can uh, you know, folks like me can digest that information reasonably well. Um, you know, whether you know, I, I think I think uh, the two examples that well, you gave three examples in your um, in your material here, uh, four actually. Um, and uh, I mean, you know, the first one was pretty. You know, the, the example of a uh, landfill closure costs, or, or I think that's a good example. Um, Pretty easy to adjust, digest. Uncollectible amounts of accounts receivable. Um, I think that's also pretty easy, you know. And, and, and governments already do a pretty good job, and in, in, in I think when it's material, um, you know, the other two is, is is things that you do we do deal with in in various uh, shapes and forms. Contingent liability associated with obligation of another entity. I think you see a lot of that in places like California, and then. Um, asset retirement obligation. Um, I, you know, the um, I, I kind of feel, at least personally, that th these are you know, you go from easy, you know, when when they give a number to things like you know, OPEP liabilities and things like that. The market is uh, is learning to deal with that. Um, I can also see a challenge from from a government's perspective. Um, as to to give a hard number when they themselves don't really know, um, and and sometimes in my experience, um, as as being a user and 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 maybe I'm not different from other folks, we do tend to be a little bit skeptical, um, you know, about the numbers and on 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 certain things that are significant. I think that um, folks do a pretty good job at, at 
are getting deep into the weeds and, and, and fight whether it's open liabilities and, and, and beginning to look at, at, at the assumptions that go into that. And, and you know, that in of itself is, is just as much work as, as you know, assessing financial statements. So, um, you know, I, I, there's value to this. Um, I just don't know how much discipline um, and uh, accuracy goes into this when very often these things can be uh, used as political, not used as, but um, folks who provide this information do worry a little bit about the political and public perception. Um, uh, so, yeah, I, I don't know. It, it, I guess it's my way of saying that um, I, th this is good information. Um, I think that folks who look at this do often view this with some level of, of, of critical thinking and skepticism. <laughs> and, uh, um, and, and that's just based on uh, just some example of open liabilities, you know, that in of itself is, it's just it's a difficult thing to to understand, and even what the n numbers mean. And um, but I think that the market is coping with it. Okay, so if if you if you were looking at a government financial statement, you had a there was a disclosure in there for the significant um, estimate risks associated with um, a significant estimate. How would you use that information um, in your analysis? Yeah, I think that if, if uh, so, um, if I'm not in, if, if I if I don't know that much about that particular uh, liability, you know, if I, if I say open liability, I think I can kind of, depending on what state they're in, I can kind of guesstimate at least at least assess, you know, how they compare with others, and you know, are they really bad, are they are they worse off, or is this manageable? Uh, but let's say that I'm looking at uh, at in a mid-sized to small city that I don't know a whole lot, a lot about and. Uh, they do disclose, you know, not open, but something that's kind of unique, you know, cost of municipal landfill, let's say, or or, or they have a, a accounts receivable that's you know, 10% of the operating budget uh, or something significant like that. Um, I, you know, I would take a face value. I will, you know, I think I have to assume that that's what they're telling me is, is correct and it is what it is. So, um, uh, I, you know, I, I, I have, I have, a couple of options at that point, I can say, well, that's what it is and I need to make a decision now and I'm going to make that decision based on that uh, 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 description. Or I can say, well, this is too high, I'm not gonna do it, or I would like to take a little, uh, a deeper look into it. So, um, I mean, the answer is, will that affect how would I do? I think absolutely, yeah. I mean, the, the fact that it's there, you know, it, it, um, it, I think it's useful. Um, and it gives me some options uh, based based on that information. Oh, okay. Um, the the last category, Chris, is we're coming up on our our time here, and I want to be honest, mm -hmm. your time um, is on significant estimates, um, and this is an uncertainty. Um, yeah, and this is this is related to a, again an amount that is already recognized in the financial statements or disclosed in the notes, and it's more likely than not that the estimate will change. Right. And then that change would be um, significant. So. Right. Um. Any anything to add on on that category on how you would use that information in your analysis and yeah I you know I my view on on this is is not um, significantly different than um, than for the for the significant estimate risk category because I I do think that as a um, you know, as someone who uses this information, we do have to have a certain level of, of critical thinking and be and do we have to be skeptical uh, because it, it very often you know a number that's given may change. And I think that 
in my experience, you know, particularly with large numbers, um, they do change. 